Hey, what's up? Rob Arnold here. If you're a big fan of Chimera and have seen our Dehumanizing Process DVD, there's a segment about a controversial song called Stays the Same. And if you happen to know that part fairly well, you won't be at all surprised to hear me say that I can't believe I'm making this video. Okay, so Stays the Same is a song that got cut from our Impossibility of Reason record back in 2003. Some of the guys in the band wanted the song to make the record, and some of us didn't, mainly me. I guess we were arguing over whether or not to um, put a, a lighter, super radio-friendly song on the record. The song just was a different direction than I wanted the band to go in at the time. Like, I hated everything about the song, um, I hated the way it came out. I did not want Kamira to represent anything like that. Never gonna have these radio success. But I had a hundred percent packed with headbanging material that are gonna bring kids to our shows for life and make them lifetime Kamira fans. I hate thinking about this shit because it fucking sucks and it's like it's ruining my whole fucking like listening to my the CD because you're fucking I didn't even want to talk to you about this shit right now I just wanted to go listen to a CD in my car without like any hearing any of this kind of shit there was a lot of pressure from labels at that time for bands especially like heavier bands to produce some sort of radio hit that they could try to push to you know just gain more attention for the band you already came in with the frame of mind okay you're gonna write a couple radio tunes if you guys are dead set against that as a band not saying you are or you're not and that's up for you guys to figure out right. because Four of you guys might be like, I want to play some mellow shit, some of you might not. But you have to maybe accept the consequences that... Exactly. Because he wants to sell 500,000 records. Right, exactly. I know, that's cool, but you don't. Well, you he... want to do it not writing radio tunes, which is not, I'm not saying it's not possible, because bands See. have done it. But that was not the direction I wanted to go in, and, and this song was leading towards that, and I just wanted to delete it altogether. At the end of the day, the song did not get deleted, but it also didn't make the record. And I've gotten a lot of questions, and there's been a lot of mystery mystery about around this song uh, for a lot of years, so I thought after all this time, why not revisit it for old time's sake and uh, do a little playthrough of the song for you guys, uh, maybe show a couple of the main riffs, how to play them for anybody that's interested in learning it, and then finally give you my thoughts on uh, how I'm feeling about it almost 20 20 years later, do I still, uh, do I back my decision to uh, fight to get it off the album? We'll see. So let's check out a little playthrough of Kamira's Stay the Same. The beginning of the fucking band, it was there. The singing was there. Pass Up an Existence had fucking Mark singing on it with right. like a bunch of different stuff.
right, well, that was cool. You know, some fun riffs, some, some groovy elements. You know, it's got that Chimera vibe to it, and I can see how it made its way all the way to the chopping block, but I can also see how, you know, there isn't really a lot of kind of like thrash or super heavy elements to it that could have led us in a more brutal direction. It kind of like opened itself, you know, riff-wise as it was coming together um, for, you know, the potential to be like a lighter, radio-friendly type tune. Um, but I will say here, I decided to, to give my, my evaluation of it first, and then I'll, I'll teach a couple riffs later. For those who aren't guitar players and aren't interested in learning a couple riffs, I'll just get this out of the way now. But my mind has not changed. Uh, one bit. I think we made the right choice. Now, granted, the song's not bad at all. You know, Mark sounds great. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that, again, I, I wanted to, you know, to me, like a band like Slayer or something, they never went light. They never really cared about that radio stuff. They were just the kings of the underground. And then, but, but you know, not everybody can reach that. I want, I was totally cool with Morbid Angel, Deicide, the, like the death metal level and, and being there and that respect you get from that and stuff. But again, you know, we were, we were on, Rotor was a big label uh, at that time and they were, there was a lot happening. And, and kind of just during this thing, it made me realize what new metal is. I think new metal is guys that were into heavy music, but now all of a sudden saw that the grass was greener over here. Hey man, if we just sing a little bit and, and write some radio tunes, maybe we can get that push it active rock and get in the nicer buses and play the bigger stages and everything. So, I mean, hey, in theory, it's a great idea, but I was, I, it just dawned on me actually 10 minutes ago that that might've been how new metal like came about. Just guys that wanted a, a, more success than the ceiling of of like, you know, just dark, heavy metal would allow. And so, uh, anyway, like I said, you know, Mark sounds good, all that kind of stuff, but it's not the, the, the direction I wanted to go in with the impossibility reason. I wanted to make a point after Pass Out of Existence. And, um, you know, Down Again, I'm proud of that tune for sure. And it's kind of as, as far as I was willing to go um, in terms of kicking and screaming because, you know, our, our band was always democratic and, you know, majority rule type thing or whatever so I would I couldn't just put my foot down and say this isn't happening or whatever but I sure made it known that that I didn't like it uh, as you can see some, from some of these clips in the dehumanizing process here but um, major thing that I noticed after doing this is man this solo in this song sucks and it just a, an awesome example of when you're totally uninspired and really aren't feeling good about a song and aren't feeling good about a solo and uh, you know what can happen there. You better guarantee that, or I mean I could guarantee that Slash felt pretty good about like the November Rain solo or Sweet Child of Mine, Paradise City, he's just ripping and having a great time. And on the other end of things, when I come into a song like this and I'm not happy about, all upset that we're even recording and stuff like that and I just lay down some shit solo like, and what's funny too, I wonder, Todd Bell, the cinematographer, he shot the Dehumanizing Process DVD, our Coming Alive, The Resurrection, most of our photo shoots, everything, just a great friend we went to high school with, great dude, great buddy and everything. I wonder if he'd remember this, but I do remember, while I was tracking that stays the same solo, right afterwards, Todd's filming, and he looks at me and he, he gives me a, like a, you didn't really put a lot of time into that, did you, type of look, or maybe even said it or whatever, and I was just kind of like, eh, whatever, but man, he was right as I revisited this and, and played as I was going over these riffs to put this little thing together, I'm like, God, you know, I just did not put any thought and time into this solo. Anyways, it is what it is. The song didn't make the record and uh, I can't believe it's, I'm giving it this much attention all these years later. So anyways, appreciate everybody watching and stuff. I'll go over a couple riffs now if you'd like to stick around. If not, thanks so much. We'll see you on the next one. But here we go. Uh, if you're interested in playing this, I believe the tabs may show up soon over on um, my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Rob If you're interested in seeing those, helping support all that, I'd appreciate it. Opening riff, real easy. I think this is a good one for well, for anybody, but especially, uh, you know, young players just getting into mutant riffs and just groove and bounce and stuff is, uh, it, it's just, it's just easy and got a good bounce to it. Whoop. That's it open and riff. By the way, we're in drop C, C, G, C, F, A, D, low to high. Oh, one, oh, three, four. So just chugging there, oh one, three, oh four, oh one, three, oh four, and then this little tail here. Fifth string, five on the six, hammer pull off. Six on six, five on five. Back to six on six, down to one. Some nice vibrato. And that's a little tricks scattered all over Kamira songs. do those little things all the time. Verse. 
super easy. Pre-course. Chorus. That's the tail if you're going to reverse two. But anyway, so octave, fifth string, eighth fret, third string, tenth fret, fourth string in between are muted. That's kind of it. The rest you can just figure out. It's just little variations of all that throughout the song. Super easy. C couple cool little riffs there. Solo. Not even worth showing, but easy little pattern if you felt like learning it. Watch my fingers. It's super easy to figure out. That's it. Not gonna spend too much time on it. Again, appreciate everybody watching and hope anybody that was interested in this tune enjoyed just a little evaluation, playthrough, and reflection on a 2003 B-side that didn't even make it to the B-side thing. Although, although I think it's up on Spotify nowadays. You can, you can find it there over on the uh, special edition of Impossibility Reason. Cheers, everybody. Thanks so much. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll see you again soon. I need to somehow get a hold of Rob. It's because he doesn't have long hair. His hair, for that solo, he's afraid that like if this song would ever take off and do the potential of making a radio hit out of us, a radio band, his hair's not long enough now to hit that fucking note. Ew, the hair comes down, you know what I mean? It's like, that's what he's fucking missing. It's the fucking hair, dude, I'm telling you. He has no idea like how much he's fucking missing without having that hair. God, dude, he's, I figured, see? If they would listen to me more, 